Today we're going to be building this Ornament and Crime Eurorack module. So big shout out to the guys that made this open source. It's awesome and a big thanks. So first thing we're going to need to do is gather all our parts and get our soldering iron going. This is my soldering setup. Uh, I've got an overhead microscope which makes all the small pieces much easier to do. So first thing I always like to do is get the PCB and just tin one side of every pad on it. So once you get going this goes really fast. I usually just start in the top left hand corner and then kind of work my way down the board doing one pin on every component. And the reason I do this is because when I'm going to place the components um, I can just remelt that one pad and slide them in, get them aligned and then solder the rest. It makes everything just so much faster and easier. So here's the first IC. What I usually like to do is do all the ICs first and then all the resistors and capacitors and passives um, second because it's nice to have the room around the pins on the ICs when you're doing them. It just makes it a little easier to maneuver everything. So first I solder the uh, one pin and get it aligned. And then once it aligned, once it's aligned, I can solder the rest of the pins. On a smaller part that's harder to solder than this, I usually will go top left pin and then bottom right pin, or top left and top right, uh, just so it stays aligned. But this one's pretty big and it's not really going to move around, so I just soldered, soldered one pin after the other. So it's important to really heat up the pad and the pin and to not just blob the solder on top of the soldering iron. Uh, if you do that, it doesn't really get a good bond. So I think this example is a little better. Um, so again, just soldering the first pin to get it aligned and then going on to the rest. And then I really try to touch my soldering iron to the pad and to the pin and then I touch the solder to the pin of the component as much as possible and it flows in there really well that way. Oh, on the ICs make sure that the uh, white stripe lines up with the pin 1 indicator. So this component, the DAC, is the hardest component on the board to solder. So there's a couple ways to do it. Um, if you've got a soldering iron set up like this, the easiest way that I've found is to use a lot of flux, which I don't show in the video, um, but you can just get a liquid flux and um, put the flux all over the pins and then try to keep the soldering iron on one pad and one pin at a time and be really careful because the solder wants to uh, bridge the gap between pins. And if that happens, you can either use a solder sucker um, to remove the solder or some copper braid. So on this one I'm just showing the, the top two pins that I soldered. Uh, I didn't get good footage of soldering the rest of it. <clears throat> uh, here's the regulator. I'm just going to go fast motion because I think you guys get the picture by now, but it's always fun to see every component soldered, I think. Mm. 
Then once I'm done with all the ICs and kind of odd parts, I go to the passives, the capacitors, and the resistors. And like I said before, I just melt the one pad, slide it in so it's nice and aligned, and then come back and do the other one. And here's a resistor. I like to do all the same values at once, so I'll, all the 510 ohm resistors all at once. And then whatever resistor I have the most of, like say it's a 10K that I have to do 20 of, I do that last because it's easier to find the resistors that you haven't soldered. Um, so you just go around to all the places that don't have components on them and solder there. It makes it easy to find. So once you're done with all the surface mount components, um, go ahead to your through-hole components. I showed uh, soldering the diode in really fast. Uh, I was still in fast motion, but if you want to see that, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You can always go back and pause the video. So with the headers, what I do is push them in and then hold them from the back while I solder one pin. And then I look at it to make sure that it's not lifted up off the board. And then I go back to the uh, back side and solder all the pins. Some more fast motion of soldering the headers for the Teensy development board. Same thing, I go in from one side, solder the back, come back, uh, make sure it's aligned, and then solder the rest of the pins. And I'm soldering in the buttons right now, very fast. And here's the Teensy development board. You have to cut this trace. You don't have to, but it's a good practice because it protects the uh, board from getting damaged when you're trying to program it if it's powered from the uh, Euro rack at the same time you're trying to power it from the USB. So it's a good idea to, to cut that trace. <clears throat> so here's the OLED display and the pin header on the OLED display I like to cut down. In fact you have to cut down um, so that it will fit behind the front panel. So I, I'm not sure if I show that in this. I think I might show it later in the video. So now I'm soldering the audio jacks and the easiest way that I found, I found a couple easy ways to do it. This is one. Um, soldering two in at a time because two leads go into the same hole and you can just solder those both, kind of align them up with your fingers. And if you uh, have a good eye, you can get them nice and aligned. Another way to do it is to put them all in and then put the faceplate on which keeps them aligned but I found that does not keep them nice looking it'll keep them uh, so you can get the faceplate on and off fine but they're kinda skewed around and do it that way it's whatever your preference is so again just fast motion going through soldering all the rest of the pins once I have them aligned there it is so there is the finished board and now I'm just gonna put the caps on the buttons and they just click on in there. And the faceplate, fitting that on. It slides on nicely if you have everything aligned. So, um, yeah, next you want to put those, um, the nuts on the audio jacks. Uh, and then what I didn't show is adding that 10 millimeter standoff, the Phillips head screw by the OLED display. Um, you want to put that in there to keep it the right space off of the, um, the circuit board. And then when I put the nuts on the rotary encoders, just tighten it enough to keep it, uh, to keep it somewhat tight. But if you tighten it too much, it'll bend the faceplate. Just keep it um, tight enough to, you know, so they don't fall off. And then get your nice knobs. I got ones with brass inserts because you don't have to worry so much about stripping the set screw and they're just much higher quality. I went with the black and white theme just because I really like the way that looks, the black and white and silver. And I didn't put the 6mm standoff under the OLED display. I haven't found that I need it. I found that the header keeps it um, pushed up against the faceplate fine enough. Uh, testing out the buttons. 
Uh, sometimes these buttons will get a little stuck on the faceplate because it's not perfectly aligned. It's hard to get it perfectly aligned. So then what I do is just kind of push it to where the buttons work well. And then I put the other screw in this standoff and tighten them both up to keep it nice and aligned and so those buttons will click well. And then once you finish this, that is it. Your module is ready to, uh, to power up and calibrate and do all that good stuff with.